Danny Wei is an absolute legend in the world of skateboarding, and he has broken more records than you can keep track of. With a net worth of 12 million, he uses money to create bigger and bigger stunts each year, with one of them being a 360 over the goddamn Great Wall of China. That's huge. Not only that, but he's also a very rare case of a man that is also able to skate street just as well as vert. And even outside of skateboarding, he has accomplished a lot as a business owner and a rallycross driver. So without taking up any more time, let's take a look into the man whose balls are literally made of steel. The life of Danny Wei. Born in Portland, Oregon on April 15th, 1974, Danny Wei was born into a family with difficult circumstances. Just before Danny's first birthday, his father Dennis was jailed for failing to pay child support to his previous wife. Then within nine days, he was found hanging by a rope in his cell and his death was ruled a suicide. Following his father's death, his mother Mary dated a bunch of different bad dudes who abused the entire family, including Danny Wei and his brother. As a kid, there was a lot of domestic oh. violence and most often, what perpetuates that is drugs and alcohol so after a bit of time his mother finally remarried to a man called Tim O'Day who introduced Danny and his brother Damon to both skateboarding and surf but this relationship didn't last long and the two got divorced and then later Tim O'Day died during a surfing session surviving his childhood meant he needed to continue to find an escape and that escape for Danny away was skateboarding by the time Danny was four he regularly skated at Del Mar skate park ranch and he got good really fast. By the age of 11, he had won his first contest that he entered, and shortly after, he received his first sponsorship from Horsoy Skateboards along with Vision Skateboards. By the time 1988 rolled around, he was 14. Danny rode briefly as an amateur for the famous Bones Brigade skateboard team. He, along with Bucky Lasek, were also later featured in a short segment of a Powell video titled Public Domain. Within months of working with Powell, he decided to move on to bigger things, so he left and joined a company called H Street. While he was with them, Danny Wei won his very first vert contest. Much like Bones Brigade, he did not stick with H Street for very long, and he left them for blind skateboards next year. While he was with them, he was the first skater to ever try to do the 900, but he ultimately failed to land it. This can be seen in a 1990 video called Risk It. He didn't stay with blind skateboards for long and again left, but this time he went to join Mike Cherensky to begin a new company called Plan B Skateboards in 1991. Plan B was a company formed as a part of Dwindle Distribution Company, which at the time was overseen by Steve Rocco and Rodney Mullen. When forming the team, Cherensky had an intention of creating a super team of riders. This is when Danny Wei's career really started to take off. After joining Plan B, Thrasher Magazine named him Skater of the Year for the first time in 1991. He even had a part in the classic Plan B video, Virtual Reality, which was released in 1993. In it, you can see him skate on iconic spots such as El Toro and Carlsbad. And a little after Virtual Reality was released, Mike Trensky died in a car accident, which left the team management to both Danny Wei and Colin McKay. The two had to temporarily suspend the company because the loss was so hard on everybody. This is where things started to get really dark for Danny Wei. He had a horrific surfing accident that left him with a horrible neck injury and neurological problems that made him bedridden for over a year. I mean, I hit my head so hard on the, you know, it felt like a pile driver had smashed my head into my shoulders. Zero movement from my waist up for over a year. During this time, he had 24 surgeries. A few years rolled by without much notable stuff going on in his life due to his recovery. But once 1997 hit, Danny was back on his feet again. This is where he started to get inspired to shatter world records. So the first one on his list was breaking the world record for the biggest air, where he did a 12 foot kickflip. Obviously, this vert ramp was just not enough for him, so he needed to find even bigger, so he moved on to get more speed. And well, what's the easiest way that you could find more speed to get on a vert ramp, you might ask? Build a bigger ramp? Well, no, of course not. Obviously, you want to jump out of a helicopter. So in the same year, he found a helicopter pilot and dropped in from the helicopter, making him the only skater in the world to have ever done this. Then one day, he went to his mentor's office, grabbed a napkin, and drew what we know today as a mega ramp. He claimed that he'd be able to set a new world record for not only height, but also distance. And it didn't take long for his napkin dream to become a reality. And shortly after, the mega ramp was complete. And so we heard about the mega ramp, like mega ramp, mega? What is that? And then we saw it. By 2003, he had set a world record for a distance of 75 feet of air. Even in the video, it looks intimidating as hell. And I can't imagine myself standing on top of the mega ramp, looking down at it, knowing to myself that I'm going to fly 75 feet through the air on a piece of wood with four polyurethane wheels. 
Like at this point, you might as well wear a parachute or something. The Mega Ram quickly became the greatest thing to have ever entered Danny Way's life. Daily, he began coming up with new ideas with what he could do with it. And not even a year after his 75 foot jump, he won a gold medal at the X Games where he broke his long distance jump record again, this time going 79 feet. After this, Thrasher decided to name him Skater of the Year once again. And as if you cannot get more extreme than flinging yourself off a ramp going highway speeds, he decided that in 2005 that his previous stunts were just not quite enough. So what did he do? He straight up 360 over the Great Wall of China on a skateboard. Just climbing up to the structure itself would have been terrifying. And Danny Wei himself recalled that it swayed back and forth in the wind and that it didn't feel sound. So he decided to do it anyway. He didn't land at first try and the fall left him with a fractured ankle. Then the following day he did what any sane man would do with a fractured ankle and he tried jumping it again, this time propped up on a bunch of pain meds. And to everyone's astonishment, he landed it only on his second try. And I'm sure that almost anybody would say that landing a jump over the Great Wall of China in two tries is very impressive. But if you're still somehow not impressed, a little known fact is that the guy who previously tried jumping the Great Wall of China on a BMX died doing it. 2005 was also the same year that Wei and McKay decided to relaunch Plan B. With the financial backing of Syndrome Distribution, they maintained their roles as company co-owners as well as team skaters. During the remainder of 2005 and 2006, Danny Wei remained unstoppable. He won gold for the second and third time at the X Games 11 and 12, and by the time May rolled around, he landed his first backflip and backflip rocket air on a mega ramp in Mexico City. And then just after that, he became the first skater to drop in from the top of the guitar at the Hard Rock Cafe and Casino, which was from a height of 82 feet above the ground. By the time 2006 ended, it was time for him to take a break. If he kept going at this pace, he would either end up dead or in a vegetable state. So he did just that and chilled around until about 2009, which is when he got bored and decided to break the land speed record while on a skateboard with the help of Rob Deerdick. He got a custom board made which is essentially a stretched out version of his normal board. They even did testing in a wind tunnel which would ensure that it would be stable. After the first test going 60 miles per hour while winds were blowing 40 miles per hour, he discovered some speed wobbles. So they shaved down a part of the wheels and tried it again. After several halted attempts, Wei started edging closer to the 70 miles per hour mark, but then disaster struck. I cannot believe that I'm like, fine. So yeah, even after sliding on concrete at 70 miles per hour, he still decided to keep doing it and tried it again. And he did it successfully, setting a new world record at the time of 74 miles per hour. And of course, he had to finish off 2009 with another dub, and he won gold for the first time ever at the Big Air Rail Jam at X Games 15, which took place in Los Angeles, California. While Danny Wei's skateboarding accomplishments are nothing short of unfathomable, he actually lives a pretty impressive life outside of skateboarding as well. He was involved in a band called Escalera with fellow Vert and Mega Ramp skater Bob Burnquist, which created electric hip hop music. He's also a bit of a TV star, appearing in four different documentaries, and of course, he's also a rallycross driver. To top it off, he's married to a girl named Kari, and the two have two sons together, Raiden and Tavin. Together, they all live in San Diego, California, and when he's not, you know, jumping over the Great Wall of China or breaking any world records or jumping out of helicopters, he enjoys fishing, playing guitar, and riding motorcycles. Today, Wei is more focused on giving back. He's devoted a ton of his resources to designing and supporting and fundraising a series of skate parks in Kauai for the last six years. His enthusiasm for this project is obvious, and for anyone who knows the amazing skate parks that he has been involved in in the past, there are high expectations and a lot of anticipation for the upcoming projects. And that's pretty much the story of Danny Wei as we know it today. He is a definition of making skateboarding look cool to people who do not skate. He's an inspiration to kids to get into skateboarding, and best of all, he's just an amazing skater that has left people's jaws on the floors ever since he first started participating in competitions and breaking world records. And as for now, that's all I have for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, leave a like, and leave a comment down below for what other skaters you want me to do in the future. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.